All right, with this uh, forecast video update on this uh, Thursday, April the 18th, this is the evening edition. I'm Josh Brown. Well, I'm coming on the air about at least at about an hour early as of right now because uh, there are some showers and some storms we need to track right now across parts of Middle Tennessee and Southern Kentucky. But as of right now, there's nothing severe, so that's the good news. But some of these storms are, become, are producing some thunder and some lightning and, of course, some gusty winds. So let's take a look at the Barron Threat, uh, ThreatNet uh, radar at the moment at this uh, 7 p.m. hour. Give me just a second here. Yeah, and as you can see, that we have a we do have a line of showers and thunderstorms right now, and they're embedded, so they're not they're not really as widespread at the moment. So just uh, keep that in mind. So we so thank, so uh, what we're looking at right now is these uh, sh uh, these thunder showers and storms are basically over just to the west side of uh, downtown Nashville. We got somewhere here over towards uh, Ashland City, also over towards uh, Keystone Springs. Also got, also got here some down around, actually up around, uh, at least south of Springfield in Robertson County, so a little, a little bit of a, uh, some heavier rain there as well. Also got some uh, some heavier uh, showers and storms here down towards, uh, at least just to the west of Franklin and Williamson County, uh, just, to, just to the north of uh, 840. I believe, this, I believe this, this is Highway 96, I believe, uh, right there. So, yeah, so that's what we're seeing. So some, uh, the, see, that's where we're seeing some of those uh, showers and storms right now. And also, I got some storms here down around uh, Murray County, just to the west side of Columbia. But Mount Pleasant, you're getting some pretty, he pretty, pretty decent heavy rain as well. Also, even the same thing for the uh, folks down in Lawrenceburg. So, yeah, so those showers and thunderstorms are, pr are pretty much embedded. So, they're not, they're not, they're nothing too heavy at the moment. And this is head of a strong cold front that's going to drop our temperatures as we, uh, start off the first half of this uh, holiday weekend, which we'll look at the, uh, uh, what we're expecting for high <coughs> uh, highs for tomorrow and Saturday and just a little a little later, but uh, let's go ahead. Let's go. Let's, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the wind shear right now and show you how maybe how strong the winds are at the moment here. But I, but I know those winds are not really as like very very strong, but some are continuous. But some of these storms are continuing some gusty winds. So let's turn on the velocity right now and show you what we're seeing. So right now we're seeing winds for fifth point them right now we're seeing winds around Ashland City at around 40 miles per hour. Also seeing winds over just to the northwest side of Nashville. Just to the south of Jolton, around 28, and also seeing winds over around to Spring, around the, south of Springfield, also at 28 miles per hour. And by the way, whenever you see the greens on the velocity, that means the winds are going away, or excuse me, towards the radar. And whenever you see reds, that means the winds are going away from the radar. So that's what uh, they mean. And also, we're seeing some heavy winds here around uh, down around the Fairview area as well. Same thing. Winds around uh, winds are estimated around 28 miles per hour. Also down around uh, Columbia. Or at least to the north side of Columbia, we're seeing winds estimated at around uh, close to 30 uh, for you folks. So yeah, so 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 the winds are not really as impressive. We're not seeing like a, we're not seeing like it like any 60 or 65 or 70 mile per hour winds with with these uh, heavier uh, cells of rain and infused storms. So that's the good news. But wouldn't be wouldn't be surprised if we see winds get up to around 60 miles per hour in some spots. So. That's why there's a marginal risk for severe weather as we head into the rest of this uh, evening. So we're, we're talking about potential for gusty winds here between about 55 to 60 miles per hour, maybe some small hail, lightning, and uh, and for the most part, the tornado threat is slow. So it looks like the good the good threat of severe weather is going to stay down towards the south uh, for the rest of this evening. So that's the good thing. Also around uh, just around the Bellevue area over southwestern Davidson County, we're seeing winds also estimated at around 30 miles per hour. So we see, we're seeing winds estimated between about 25 to 35 and up to 40 miles per hour, what we see right now here on the velocity. So at least thankfully the winds are not really as violent or super strong at the moment. But as far as the hail is right now here across parts of Middle Tennessee with this uh, line of showers and thunderstorms. Okay, let's zoom out just a little bit here. Uh, right now, the hail threat is lower, but we, but we see some indications of, of some uh, small hail right now here just to the southwest side of uh, Davidson County, places like Bellevue. Also, a little bit small hill down around uh, Keystone Springs. One here just to the west side of Franklin. One over, one over, over in eastern Hickman County, and one here down in southwestern Murray County. So again, the hail threat is slow. So, but still cannot rule out some small hail, about marble to dime size, possibly with these uh, embedded storms as we head into the rest of this evening. So, just to uh, uh, keep that in mind. And uh, and by the way, for those of you that are just uh, popping on into the uh, Facebook live stream, I really greatly I greatly appreciate if you can go ahead and uh, share this. Uh, uh, feed to your other followers because the followers, because you know uh, there's some storms arriving across parts of Middle Tennessee, and I bet they uh, want, I bet they really love to know uh, where the storms are and uh, where it's going to be heading to next. <clears throat> so again, for those of you that are just for those of you that are just popping on into the stream again, I really appreciate if you can go ahead and share the feed uh, to your other followers if you can, just to give them attention, get their them attention of where these storms are heading to. So we're gonna we're gonna track these right now here for you and. Uh, 
we'll, we'll put this track here, uh, first of all, over towards the west side of Nashville, where we have this little strong storm just around the Cockerell Bend area, especially around west Nashville on, in along I-40. So we'll track this uh, storm right, right here. Again, some of them, some are, some are becoming a little bit stronger, but again, nothing severe. So this is moving due to the east northeast here. We'll put this at around we'll put this at around 60 miles per hour. So this will be impacting places like uh, okay, right now it's uh, 705. Fix the storm track here. So it looks like uh, uh, Charlotte Park. This will be, should be arriving in your area here at around uh, 711. Uh, Ridgeland at 713. Uh, Cherokee Park at around 714. The same thing for Bordeaux Hills. Uh, Bordeaux at 715. Uh, Nashville, especially the downtown area at around 717. Brooklyn Heights at 718. Cumberland Heights at 718 as well. Same thing for Avondale and also Inglewood at 721. So if you're in these areas, including downtown Nashville, that are, that are, that I called out, you know, they'll be the path of this storm. Just be prepared that this, this will be heading to your direction here at least for the next uh, few, several minutes or so. So just uh, uh, keep that in mind. Now let's put another let's put a, let's put another uh, storm track with this other cell that we're watching carefully. That is over here towards the uh, Jolton area. That's in northwestern Davidson County, just along the I-24 corridor. Same thing, moving to the east northeast here at around 60 miles per hour. So, okay, it's, it's 7:06. Fix the storm track again. So this will be impacting places like uh, Jolton, especially in about the next uh, couple minutes or so. Uh, Lickton at 7:13, Little Creek at 7, 7:14. Uh, Dalmere, hope, pronounce, hope I'm pronouncing that incorrect, around 715. Same thing for the Union Hill area, uh, Solitude Acres at 717. Goodlitzville at 719. Amquai, I think I pronounced that, pronounced that incorrect, I believe, at 719. And the uh, North Creek area, which is near Goodlitzville at around 719 also, and the same thing for Edinwald. So, yeah, again, these thunderstorms are just embedded. So, they're again, they're becoming a little bit stronger, but again, nothing severe. So, that's the good news. But some could, some could, some could contain some heavy rain possible with these uh, cells as well. That could lead to some minor flooding. So, you want to be, may want to be careful out there if you're driving uh, this evening. So, uh, just to give you a heads up on that. Also, we're watching this, uh, this other storm here down to the southwest of Franklin and Williamson County. Same thing moving to east-northeast. So I'll put a track for that for you as well for you folks that live down there. Again, moving due to the east northeast here at 60 miles per hour. So this would be impacting uh, places like, uh, fix the storm track here, 707. So this would be impacting places like uh, Thompson Station at uh, 712, Harpeth at 715, same thing for Cali, uh, Little Texas at 719, same thing for Paintsville uh, and Epworth and around 720 for um, Millview. Arno at 721, and the same thing for Rudderville and Lampkin Bridge at around 722. These are smaller communities, by the way, in Williamson County. So if I called out those communities that will be in the path of this uh, cell, just be prepared that this, this is going to be heading to your direction here pretty soon. So just uh, give you a heads up on that. Also, we're going to watch this other cell here down towards Murray County as well. So you can see there's some, some heavy rain and maybe a little bit of some thunder or lightning uh, just to the west side of downtown Columbia. Again, some are a little bit stronger, but again, nothing severe. Of course, I'll let you know if there are any severe warnings out here for the rest of this evening. Just, again, again, the severe threat is lower, but we'll look at the uh, we'll, we'll look at those uh, cluster of thunderstorms here in just a few minutes here. But that's happening right now down towards the south of where we are. So we, we just need to track these uh, cells first here that are that is that is uh, <laughs> that is approaching Middle Tennessee. So we'll put a track here, and this is for folks over in Murray County. Okay, moving to east northeast at around uh, sixty miles per hour. So it's 708. Storm track once again. So this will be impacting uh, places like uh, Natco at 714, Godwin also at 714, uh, Royal Oaks at 715. Same thing for the River Heights area. Uh, Chante Acres, I hope I'm, not, I'm pronouncing that name correct, around 716. The same thing for Hardy Acres, uh, Jackson Heights at 717. Uh, Neapolis, that's the smallest community uh, just to the north of Columbia in Murray County, also at 720. Lanton at, and Match at 721. So if you're in these areas that are called out, <clears throat> and again, just be prepared that you'll be in the path of this uh, heavy rain cell that may approach your areas here pretty soon. Again, mostly there will be, there'll be smaller towns over in parts of Murray County that I'm calling out, so just uh, keep that in mind. And also the same thing here down towards Lawrenceburg. You see some pretty heavy rain as well, especially around the downtown area and along, along the Highway 43 corridor. So we're going to track this uh, cell as well. Again, moving due east-northeast at 60 miles per hour. So this would be impacting, okay, it's 
So this will be impacting a uh, new prospect at around 7.15, weekly at 7.19, uh, Bodenham at 720, Wales at 725, and Riversburg at 727. So same thing. If you're, if I called out these uh, towns here that are will be in the will be in the path of this heavy rain cell that's coming coming in from uh, Lawrenceburg, especially from eastern Lawrence County into parts of Giles County, just to just outside of Pulaski. Again, you, may, you just may want to be on high alert for the potential for maybe a strong storm that may approach your direction here soon. So just uh, just want to give you a heads up on that. So if we zoom out close, if we zoom out again, if we zoom out again here across Middle Tennessee, as you can see that if you notice that just east of I-65, the weather is dry. But again, the storms will be approaching uh, you, you know your areas here a, a little bit later. So basically, all the heaviest rain and those embedded storms are basically just along and west of I-65. But as you can see, there are some showers over towards uh, Clarksville, and also over towards uh, um, <clears throat> uh, Dixon, also around Waverly, also around Paris. These are light rain showers, so that's what we're so that's what we're going to be tracking as well. So if we to go ahead and take a look at future cast and show you, we're expecting for the rest of this evening, and show you what time the storms will be arriving uh, for other areas here that that have not seen rain uh, yet. So give me just a second here. And we're going to wait future cast to get future cast to get load up here. <clears throat> so. So pretty, so pretty much the Nashville area and along the west of I-65 are seeing mostly rain showers and some embedded storms uh, at this uh, 7 p.m. hour. And that, and that may continue around, around 8 o'clock as well, so about the next uh, uh, hour or so. So then as we head into uh, 11 o'clock, it looks like the heaviest rain should be pushing towards the plateau for places like uh, Cookville to uh, Sparta and over towards uh, McMinnville. So it could be some heavier showers around the Nashville metro area around the 11 o'clock hour as well tonight. But looks like some showers should be able to uh, uh, die down for over... <laughs> over towards uh, West Tennessee uh, a little before midnight as well. So then as we head into the overnight hours, this, this is 2 a.m., we're expecting the heaviest rain to push off towards the plateau. And again, some could turn strong with these, maybe a few embedded storms, but hopefully the severe threat should be going down just a bit. So that's the good news. So it looks like Nashville will get a little bit of a break from the rain as we head into the overnight hours tonight. So it looks like we'll see, but, but again, look what's coming. Yes, there could be another round of some showers that could move in from the west of I-65 for places like uh, Katy's, Kentucky, Dover, also down towards uh, Aaron, Waverly, and over down towards Linden and Waynesboro. So it'll be some line of some showers as we head into the overnight hours. But again, uh, this cold front is going to move in as well around that time. That could drop our temperatures much cooler as we head into your Good Friday and also as we head into uh, Easter Eve um, Saturday, which we'll look at the high temperatures we're expecting here a little bit later on future casts. <clears throat> uh, so just uh, keep that in mind. So just don't go anywhere. So that's when we head into uh, 6 a.m. in the morning. We're expecting still some showers to hang around, over, around across parts of Middle Tennessee. But it looks like Nashville looks to be okay, except the roads could be still wet. So, if you, so for those of you that still have to go to work tomorrow on Good Friday, of course, I know a lot of kids are going to be out of school as well for the uh, holiday. But for those of you that still have to work uh, tomorrow on this Good Friday holiday, uh, please give yourself some extra time to get uh, to work because, again, the roads will be, will be wet out there and there may be some showers. And, of course, we want to have the ponchos and those jackets uh, pretty handy. Because, again, not just the rain, but also the temperatures is going to be a different story as we head into the next uh, few days to start off the first half of this uh, holiday weekend. Okay, so as we wait for cast to get loaded up again. So it looks like we'll still, we'll still see some showers over across parts of Middle Tennessee. At least, like I said, not for Nashville, at least for now is what it shows as we head into between about 6 or 7 in the morning. So it looks like it'll be just it'll just be on and off showers. Again, it'll be chilly rain showers as we head into the morning hours uh, tomorrow, and even the same thing as we head into the overnight hours tonight. So then it looks like uh, more rain showers could try to make a comeback from Middle Tennessee. So it looks like between late morning into the early afternoon, I think the weather should be looking pretty okay. Well, at least for with showers. Well, like well, at least the break from the rain. That's what I meant to say. So just uh, uh, keep that in mind. But unfortunately, we got more showers moving our way as we head into. Um, into Middle Tennessee as we head into the uh, late afternoon into the evening. So it could be really a messy commute uh, for those of you that maybe are going to be heading home uh, from work uh, tomorrow evening for those of you that do have to uh, do that. So it's, gonna be, it's because these uh, showers are going to be rolling back in, and again, the roads will be wet out there. So please, please give yourself some extra time to get home from work uh, tomorrow and just try to stay safe out there. So just uh, keep that in mind. Of course, if you have any plans tomorrow evening, same thing, just be careful. And, of course, make sure you have those ponchos handy as well because we're expecting more rain showers to uh, – uh, develop from the uh, southwest into the northeast as we head into uh, late tomorrow afternoon into tomorrow evening. 
And it looks like more showers will continue, or at least the showers will continue at least the second round as we head into at least for the rest of the uh, nighttime hours on Friday, even into the overnight on um, Saturday morning. And then, so it looks like uh, we could we're still gonna see some showers, like I said, for early Saturday morning. But notice the as you notice see those pink shaded colors right here across parts of the Cumberland Plateau region. I wouldn't be surprised. Maybe early Saturday morning we could see maybe a little bit of some sleep pellets, but we're not expecting like a big deal of any, like a, not a big snowstorm or not, we're not expecting any accumulations. And that's the good news because temperatures will be above freezing, uh, as we head into the, uh, morning, as we head into the morning hours on Saturday. <clears throat> as, as we just wait feature cast to get load up again. Same thing, more showers will continue uh, through the morning hours on Saturday. And Futurecast keeps loading here. <laughs> Sometimes it happens. So showers will continue for the rest of the morning hours on Saturday. And as of right now, it looks like showers may continue pretty much all day again on Saturday. But uh, it looks like by Saturday afternoon, at least late part of the afternoon into the evening, it looks like these showers should be able to uh, die down. And hopefully they should be, and hopefully... By late, if you have Easter egg hunt, or like if you have Easter egg honey bins here by late Saturday af Saturday afternoon, uh, I think you still want to take might want to take the poncho just to be on the safe side. But I think these showers should be able to die down, and hopefully we should be able to see some clear skies uh, just a little bit. But except temperatures are not going to warm up the, uh, warm up uh, that much, so just uh, uh, keep that in mind. So you need those jackets and those long pants up uh, uh, bundled handy. So just because uh, temperatures, like I said, are not going to warm up that much as we head into uh, tomorrow and also on Saturday. So if we look at the high temperatures right now, or not high temperatures, temperatures currently right now at the 7 o'clock hour, we have, um, if we take a look at that map here. So as you can, so you can, so you can see those you can see those yellows and those green shaded colors here, that's the cold front right there. Well, at least this is behind the front that's cooling down those temperatures already over towards western middle Tennessee. But for Nashville, since the rain has not started just yet, it's still warmer out there. So I'm going to pinpoint them right now. So basically along east of I-65, we're seeing, still seeing temperatures... <laughs> Feeling like spring. Like in Nashville, you see the temperature currently around 74 at the moment. We have 75 right now in Gallatin and up towards Bowling Green, you have a temperature around 74. Also down around Franklin, you're seeing around 73 degrees. Also 72 in Columbia and also around uh, Lawrenceburg, you're seeing around, you're seeing around 71 degrees as well. So we have 70s basically along an east of I-65 ahead of this uh, front here that's producing some, a few showers and a few embedded storms at the moment. Also we have a uh, 75 right now in Murfreesboro. Same thing for Lebanon, also around uh, 73 in Cookville, 72 in Crossville, and also we have um, 72 in Jamestown. But if we look at the temperatures here, again, you can see those yellows and the green shaded colors here. Again, that behind this front, these are temperatures that are, are cooling down right now, and it's still raining. So just uh, keep that in mind. So like, like around Clarksville, your temperature is already going down to 60 degrees already. So temperature is going to drop pretty quickly after this uh, front moves in. So 60 is the current temperature in Clarksville. We got uh, 64 right now in Hopkinsville, uh, 62 in Dixon, and temperatures over towards uh, uh, Paris, sitting around uh, 61 degrees. So temperatures mostly are in, are in the low 60s behind this front at the moment, but temperatures going to continue to drop for the rest of this evening into the um, overnight hours. And again, you're not going to like those temperatures as we head into the next few days. So if we go ahead and take a look at that on Futurecast, see what we're expecting for highs uh, for uh, tomorrow. And of course for tonight as well. So again, so we, so again, this front is, so again, this cold front is, is basically just, uh, west of Nashville at the moment. So again, temperatures will still continue to stay mild and warm for areas along and east of I-65. So if, if we, of course, we're gonna, of course, we're gonna wait till get future cast to load up here. So as we head into the, uh, nighttime hours here, so overnight tonight, we're expecting temperatures to, uh, drop into the low 50s, into the upper 40s. But look at this here. This is three o'clock early tomorrow morning. We're talking about temperatures still remaining very warm. For the plateau, it's still going to be some heavy rain, maybe a few storms here. Temperatures could be in the upper 50s and low 60s. Like Cookville may see a temperature around 61 for the morning low temp as we head into uh, overnight into early tomorrow morning for you folks. Also, over towards, uh, or, should say, or should say as we head into uh, tomorrow morning, we'll back this thing up just a little bit here. So as, as, we, as we wake up in the morning, for those of you that do still have to go to work, uh, you know, for the, you know, early tomorrow morning for, you know, for your Good Friday, Again, you may want to bundle up with that uh, heavy coat, well, not the heavy coat, but maybe a light jacket or maybe a sweater, and of course, even the rain gear as well, because we're talking about some cold, we're talking about some chilly uh, conditions, along with some rain showers uh, as we head into the morning hours, and of course, we'll get a little break from that until another round comes in during the afternoon, but again, temperatures, we're talking about only upper 40s and low 50s, let's show a morning low temperature around 50 for Nashville, 
but everybody else here are mostly in the mid to upper 40s as we head into uh, 7 o'clock in the morning as we, as we wake up for the just in time for the morning commute. So as we head into the uh, afternoon hours tomorrow, we're expecting temperatures. Uh, this is what we're going to deal with here for tomorrow. And uh, you, you notice here on Future Caster shows temperatures are going to be staying in the 40s. Well, I don't think this is correct here. I think temperatures are going to be going up into the 50s. So that's going to be the high temperatures uh, for tomorrow. So just ignore the 40s. You see on the map here because this is not a, really a good uh, model of uh, forecast for high temperatures we're going to see. So we're basically going to, we're going to see 50s tomorrow. But again, there'll be some there'll be another round of some showers. Uh, so you may want to have the pot, you may want to have the may want to have those ponchos handy again as the second round comes in by late afternoon and evening. <clears throat> okay, we got to get the future cast to get loaded up again. <laughs> so then as we head into eight o'clock uh, tomorrow night, same thing. More showers will continue and temperatures will, will go down into the 40s. We're talking low to mid 40s uh, for the evening temperatures uh, for the eight o'clock hour. And as we continue to forward this here to future cast here until uh, okay, we still need to get this future cast to load up again. I don't know why it keeps uh, saying it's loading, but uh, <clears throat> it happens. <laughs> so as we head into the overnight hours, uh, as we, uh, you know, late tomorrow night and early Saturday, we're talking about temperatures dropping down into the upper 30s and maybe low 40s. Again, these are morning low temperatures for Saturday morning, so it's going to be a little bit on the chillier side. So you definitely want, may want to be prepared for maybe a potential for maybe a little bit of a light frost or maybe a light freeze potential. And again, this still could be if some rain showers possible late Friday night, which is tomorrow, and of course early Saturday morning as we head into the um, – the day on Saturday, again, temperatures from morning lows. Look, look at the temperatures here for the plateau. By the way, you can see temperatures make it down possibly in, in the mid to upper 30s. We're talking about 36 for the low temperature Saturday morning for uh, Cookville, Jamestown, and Crossville. This could be a potential, maybe a, we see maybe a late season frost and freeze potential. Basically, just a light late, late season frost and freeze potential for areas along the plateau where temperatures may be in the 30s for lows as we head into uh, Saturday morning. But somebody else here from areas along the west of I-65, including Nashville, was deep. We'll see... Base space, we'll see low 40s. <clears throat> okay, we got to get wait future cast to get, future cast to get load up again. So it looks like we'll see temperatures warm up just a little bit as we head into um, Saturday afternoon. Nope, a little too far here. But again, <clears throat> it's not going to still not going to warm up that much as we head into the, as we head into Easter Eve. We're talking about temperatures rising back into the upper 50s. I know you, I know you still see 40s uh, on the map. But again, I don't think this model is correct here. I think we're going to I think we're going to call for high temperatures uh, in the upper 50s to near 60. We, we may have we may have get a big warm up uh, over towards West Tennessee for Saturday as well. We're talking about high temperatures warming back into the 60s uh, from Paris into uh, Western Tennessee into Western Kentucky. But if you wanted some warm weather for Easter Day, well, we're going to look at that in the forecast in just a second, or at least for a little in a little bit here, because you're going to like that uh, uh, weather up at least the weather for your Easter Sunday because weather should be looking pretty uh, nice. So let me clear that and turn on future cast. So again, so only so only tomorrow and Saturday, which will be the only two days here, we're gonna have to do with with those uh, cooler and these uh, uh, along with these uh, rain showers for our viewing area. So let's go back to the radar right now and show you what's happening currently across Middle Tennessee. And again, here comes those line of showers and a, and a few embedded thunderstorms approaching uh, the metro area and along the I-65 corridors. You can see that from Franklin up towards Brentwood, Nashville. We'll say Jolton to uh, Springfield, Cross Plains. See some heavier showers and a few storms right now. But again, nothing severe. But that's something we're going to need to watch uh, carefully. But we're going to go ahead and wide, wide the big picture right now because there are some uh, bigger severe storms down towards the uh, deep south at the moment. As you can see, there are tornado watches in effect right now across parts of Alabama from Birmingham to uh, Tuscaloosa, down towards Mobile, and down towards uh, Mississippi, including, you know, the city of uh, Gulfport and Parts of, the, parts of the western Florida panhandle, and of course in the pink box so just a second ago, or maybe a few minutes ago rather. So from eastern Alabama into Georgia, including the city of Atlanta, the SPC has actually uh, updated the new uh, severe thunderstorm watch. That's an effect here. So it looks like the 20th threat could go down a little bit lower as this uh, squally moves off towards the east coast here. Let me turn on the Birmingham radar and show you where the line of storms are right now, because that's where the worst, the bad stuff is. So here it is right here. So here's the bad stuff here that uh, that the Deep South is, worried, is uh, concerned about uh, right now. So you can see there's some nasty line of showers and thunderstorms. But you notice here they're weakening just a little bit, but still there could be some strong winds, some hail. Well, not really much as, as of large hail, but also it could be maybe an isolated tornado threat. But you notice here this, this well, the squall line is weakening just a little bit. So I think that's the good news. But it may never know that could you know that could pick up a little bit, a little bit more strength for the rest of this evening into the overnight hours as the as the system continues off moves off towards the east. 
And uh, so far, there have been several reports of tornadoes across parts of Louisiana and, Miss- and Mississippi uh, earlier from late this afternoon or this evening. But uh, <clears throat> I know the, I know the survey team from the local National Weather Service offices will have to survey the, da- survey the damage uh, from possible uh, tornadoes uh, probably tomorrow. But of course, yesterday, there have been confirmed tornadoes across parts of Texas, uh, Kansas, and Oklahoma, almost a lot of almost some reports of some very large hail as well, uh, you know, from uh, from yesterday as as those uh, severe storms roll through. But again, at least the good thing is the severe threat is low for Middle Tennessee. So we're going to deal with some showers and maybe a few storms. But again, we're still under that marginal risk for isolated severe storms for Middle Tennessee for the rest of this evening, at least for the next uh, several hours. So you still want to be may want to be on high alert that there could be some gusty winds here between about fifty five to sixty miles per hour. So maybe a few severe thunderstorm warnings could get issued. Just depends how. The winds pick up just a little bit, and there could be some small hills, some lightning, and of course some heavy rainfall. But at least, thankfully, we're not expecting any tornadoes. So the tornado threat, the tornado threat is going to stay down towards the deep south where we are, as we head into the rest of this evening. So, so again, so again, for those of you just popping on into the uh, Facebook live stream, again, we're tracking some heavier rain showers and a few storms here over towards uh, just again, basically, it's, it's just right along the I-65 corridor. So places like uh, again from. Uh, uh, downtown Nashville into uh, uh, Springfield into uh, Franklin, <clears throat> also uh, Columbia and down towards Lawrenceburg. That's where we're seeing some heavier uh, stuff right now. Again, the showers are heavy, but the thunderstorms are pretty much embedded. So at least thunderstorms are not really at you know th- the thunderstorms are not as widespread. They're just embedded. So but some are, some are containing maybe some heavy rain or some gusty winds right now. So just keep that in mind. But again, if you live east of I sixty five, you're going to get some rain pretty soon. Maybe it won't be until this e- at least later this evening into the overnight hours for areas along. Uh, just just east of Nashville in, in, in areas along the plateau, so just uh, keep that in mind. All right, let's look at the forecast here for the next uh, 16 days, shall we? So if we look at the uh, forecast for Sunday, because again, Sunday should be looking pretty good. <clears throat> So if we look at the forecast for Sunday, so again, the weather should be most, uh, mostly dry. We'll see lots of sunshine to make a comeback, and you see the same system that's bringing some storms right now uh, as of this uh, 7 o'clock hour push off towards the East Coast region. But yet again, it looks like another system could try to develop across the West Coast region, give it the chance for a little bit of some rain and maybe some storms possible. But for the most part, just enjoy the nice weather for Middle Tennessee for uh, Easter Sunday, even the same thing for the Southern Plains region, and of course, even for the Southeast. If we look at the high temperatures that day, so... This is the good news here. So, look, so thankfully, Easter Sunday looks to be much better than we're going to see uh, tomorrow and Saturday because we'll see high temperatures warm back up into the uh, mid to upper 70s. And so it's supposed to float around 80 degrees, if this is correct. But look at these temperatures across parts of Oklahoma, Kansas, and Texas. They're talking about temperatures remaining pretty hot for Easter. They're talking about a pretty hot Easter Sunday for folks along the uh, the Central Plains region because they're talking about uh, temperatures in the upper 80s and maybe even low 90s. So it's going to feel more like summer. Uh, from, from Amarillo, Amarillo to Woodward, Oklahoma, into uh, Dodge City, Kansas. So, yeah, that's going to feel pretty hot as we head into, uh, again, as we head into the uh, Easter holiday. So, so for those who are planning on traveling over to uh, Amarillo or to Woodward, Oklahoma, or Dodge City, Kansas, maybe for this holiday weekend, uh, please be sure to just pack, just pack some sunscreen because, again, uh, you may never know. If you're going to be outdoors, you know, you, you, may never, you, you may never know you could get sunburned. So just uh, you, want to t- you, want, you want to protect yourself. <clears throat> All right, as we head into uh, Monday of next week, uh, the weather will still continue to stay dry, but, but again, here comes this new system. We'll be watching carefully, but as of right now, this uh, uh, new system we'll be, we'll be watching. We'll be staying up towards the north and west here. That could bring the chance for showers and storms across parts of uh, uh, Kansas, Nebraska, Missouri, and across parts of the Great Lakes region or the upper Midwest region. But for the, much of the southern United States region, including middle Tennessee, again, we should be looking okay with some uh, mostly dry weather with uh, loss of sunshine and temperatures will, st- will still continue to stay warm. And it looks like we'll see upper uh, 70s and maybe even low 80s as we head into uh, the day after Easter. Again, this is Monday of next week. So we're talking about temperatures warming back into the upper 70s and low 80s. And it looks like temperatures will start to warm back into the 80s as well here across parts of Florida, Alabama, and Georgia. Because temperatures are going to be a little bit cooler uh, in the 70s as we head into the uh, Easter holiday weekend. Which I bet all Floridians are probably going to like that uh, type of uh, weather after that uh, front moves out as we head into the, uh, again, the Easter holiday weekend. 
So here's the precipitation type ice, and again, there could be some showers with this new system across parts of the northern United States region. Also, there could be a few storms from Chicago to uh, St. Louis, but in terms of severe weather with this next system, right now the severe threat appears to be on the lower side, but again, this is just only a week away, or, or maybe you say this is just only four days away, and you may never know, that could change as we get closer. So we need to watch this uh, next system carefully, but for the most part, in Middle Tennessee, the weather should be looking okay, at least for the, at least for the next uh, first few days. Uh, as we start off, as we start the uh, final uh, work week for April. All right, as we head into uh, Tuesday of next week, uh, April 23rd, uh, same thing. The weather for Middle Tennessee looks to stay dry. And again, uh, here comes this uh, next system. We're watching carefully that could bring uh, the big chance for showers and thunderstorms across parts of uh, Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri, all the way up towards the Great Lakes region. But Again, much of the much of the eastern and even the southeast United, United, United States region, again, looks to be uh, pretty dry. So again, we'll be, we'll be dry not just for uh, not just for Sunday, but also on Monday and Tuesday. So maybe you'll, hopefully you enjoy those uh, dry days uh, as we start the first half of the work week next week before this before this uh, next system we'll, we'll be tracking carefully moves back into Middle Tennessee later that week. <clears throat> And here's the high temperatures we're expecting down below that uh, next Tuesday on the 23rd. We're talking about uh, temperatures staying pretty warm. Still expecting to be in the upper 70s into the low 80s. And look at this here. We're talking mid to upper 80s across parts of the southeast and across much of the entire east coast region. Also, as we head into the day on Tuesday the 23rd. But with this uh, next system, uh, yeah, there could be some strong storms as well across parts of Texas and Oklahoma. And even, uh, even as far north as Kansas, Kansas City or Des Moines, Iowa, into Lincoln, and Nebraska. But in terms of severe weather, once again... It shows on the instability, there could be a few strong to severe storms with this next system across parts of uh, the plains and across parts of the, of the Midwest region. But uh, I think we're just, we're just going to call this the pure land of voodoo because this because this is just it's, it's just only about five days out, and you may never know that could change as we get uh, closer. So please just uh, keep that uh, in mind. All right, as we head into a week from yesterday, next Wednesday, April 24th, looks like maybe a few showers may try to sneak in from parts of Middle Tennessee, but they wish to be looking okay for the rest of everybody across our viewing area and even, and even, and even for the rest of the southeast United States region. But we're still going to track this uh, next system as we head into the later part of next week as it comes in from the northwest and push on towards the east and southeast. So if we look at the high temperatures once again down below that, since the weather, will be, since the weather may, still, <laughs> may still stay dry for next Wednesday, We'll still be in the upper 70s to around 80, 80 degrees, and still mid to upper 80s to near 90 degrees could could make a comeback as we uh, come back for the southeast as we head into uh, next Wednesday as well. So the temperature is going to feel more like summer uh, again for the southeast United States as we head into uh, midweek. Here's the precipita uh, precipitation precipitation once again. So just a few showers of storms here, uh, a few storms possible across parts of uh, Texas to Arkansas. Some showers across parts of West Tennessee, and of course some storms across parts of, uh, we'll say, from Chicago to Indianapolis into the Great Lakes region. But in terms of severe weather, if we look at the instability, uh, right now there could be a few strong to severe storms across parts of Arkansas and Texas. But again, uh, this is just way too early, and it, again, things could change as we get closer. But for now, we're just going to call it the chance for maybe a few showers just along and west of I-65 as we head into the 24th of April. Again, that's oh, the week. The, this this will be a week from yesterday. All right, here comes here comes, the, here comes this uh, system We're approaching Middle Tennessee as we head into the as we head into the early morning hours on Thursday of next week. This is a week from today, April twenty fifth. So, we'll, so it looks like we'll see a chance for some rain and maybe some storms possible. But again, this is just, this is just only a week a week out, and you know things could change as we, as we get closer. But if we look at the morning low temperatures Thursday, it looks like our next front can move and that could drop temperatures. Well, it looks like we'll be in the sixties for parts of Middle Tennessee as we head into uh, Thursday morning. But ahead of our, our next front, that could drop our temperatures down into the fifties for morning lows uh, that morning as well. <clears throat> but uh, in terms of severe weather, well, let's look, let's look at the precipitation type values first. So here, again, here comes our next round of rain that may push in towards Middle Tennessee for early Thursday morning of next week. This is a week from today. And again, there could be a few storms, but in terms of severe weather for Middle Tennessee with this next system, it appears to be lower, but you know, maybe a couple of strong storms. But again, it's just, this is just only a week away, and again, things could change as we get uh, closer. So please just uh, keep that in mind. 
And more rain continues we head into the afternoon hours on Thursday of next week. Again, this is a week from today, so the system will push off towards the East Coast region. But look at the Central Plains region. You see the weather looks to stay pretty dry and clear as we head into uh, that day. And if we look at the high temperatures again, once again for next Thursday, and this is our next uh, cold front we'll be tracking carefully. And that could cool down our temperatures just a little bit. According to the, GF- according to the GFS, there's those temperatures cooling down uh, into the um, 70s, maybe low 70s, maybe upper 60s in some spots. But you can see some temperatures... Make, excuse me, it may cool down into the 50s and 60s across parts of the uh, Great Lakes and across parts of the Ohio Valley region. But look at these temperatures here from the Central Plains region, region since the weather should be, excuse me, since the weather should be, God, I'm talking too fast here. <laughs> so you can see those temperatures here across parts of the Plains region from uh, Texas to Oklahoma, Kansas to the Dakotas and across parts of Minnesota. That means temperatures will be comfy since the weather should be dry. Uh, for these areas here as we hand it to you that day. So looking pretty nice with 70s and 80s for high temps for the Plains region, but looking pretty hot for the southeast to continue with the highs in the upper 80s and low 90s as we hand it to you uh, Thursday of next week as well. But again, there'll be some storms moving your way, moving their way as well. All right, as we head into a week from tomorrow, next Friday, April 26th, it looks like the weather should be drying out as this uh, same system that brings that'll bring us the chance for some rain on Thursday. We'll push off towards the East Coast. But yet again, it looks like another system could try to develop here across parts of the Northern Plains region. But for the most part, Middle Tennessee and across much of the Plain areas, it looks to stay pretty dry. And if we look at the uh, high temperatures for next Friday, it looks to be uh, much warmer. We're talking about, uh, we're talking about uh, temperatures, uh, uh, you know, warmer. Uh, Oh, God, I'm talking too fast here. Again, bear with me, everybody. This happens sometimes. When I'm, you know, when I'm talking about weather, you know, I talk a little, a little too fast, you know, but like what you, like we hear right now. But anyway, we're, we're talking about high temperatures moving back into the um, 70s for Middle Tennessee as we head into uh, next Friday. But look at these temperatures in the dark red shaded colors across parts of Nebraska. Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas. We're talking about high temperatures warming back, warming back up into the upper 80s to around 90. Even the same thing for Florida as well, which is going to stay that way as we head into late next week. So, next week. so I wouldn't be surprised if the southern states, if the uh, southern states, southern states, uh, excuse me, the southern states uh, uh, see summer like uh, weather pretty early. So that's something we can watch carefully. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see that, you know, see summer like weather that early for late April. At least for for parts of the uh, southern United States region, but I know Florida. I know Florida sees uh, summer pretty early in April because uh, you know it gets pretty. It gets really really warm. You know, as we head into later in the spring, every spring, you know, for that state. All right, as we head into uh, next Saturday, April 27th, it looks like the weather should be looking pretty good as of right now for race day. If you don't know, if you don't know what, what I'm talking about here, uh, next Saturday is uh, the St. Jude Nashville Rock and Roll, both full marathon and half marathon races. And uh, I know over the past few days it showed some ra- it showed rain on the, G- on the GFS for that day, but maybe if we're, but I know we're still we're still kind of too early. To- <laughs> We're still kind of a little too early to go into details if this is going to happen or not, but let's just cross our fingers that hopefully the, hopefully the weather should be looking dry for race day for, for next Saturday. And this is, the, this is April the 27th. So looking pretty good here. And of course, it could be a few storms may try to uh, form across parts of uh, Florida uh, for that day as well. But then it looks like, uh, excuse me, uh, it looks like a new system will, tr- will try to make a develop. <laughs> We'll try to develop across parts of the upper Midwest region. That could bring the next chance for showers and storms. Not for us, but for the Northern Plains states. And if look at the high temps for next Saturday, it looks to be still much warmer. We're still talking about high temperatures staying pretty warm in the upper 70s to around 80 degrees. Well, maybe low 80s possible in some spots as we head into, again, this is uh, next Saturday, April 27th. But since there may be some rain across parts of the Northern Plains states from Minnesota to the Dakotas, it looks like temperatures will be, it looks like temperatures will be much cooler in the uh, 40s and 50s. As we head into the last Saturday for that month. Again, this is a week from this Saturday. Again, that's on April the uh, 27th. All right, as we head into the last Sunday for April, this is April 28th. It looks like the weather, same thing, it looks to stay dry. So hopefully maybe the final weekend of this month looks will, will look pretty good. If the model if the model doesn't doesn't change much here, but you can see the same storm system that's going to bring the chance for some rain across much of the northern plain states will stay up there uh, for a while, and there could be some st- 
excuse me, there could be some summer storms possible across parts of the uh, state of Florida as well. So it looks like uh, Florida, Florida's getting ready for almost what we call it the wet season for the summer. So it's, it's almost it's almost there. So there could be some showers or some summer like uh, thunderstorms uh, popping up across parts of the state of Florida as we head into uh, next or, yeah next Sunday, April the twenty eighth. But for Middle Tennessee, again, the weather should be looking pretty okay. But the big rain chances will, excuse me, the big rain chances will, chances will stay up to the north as we head into uh, the twenty eighth. And temperatures since the weather since the weather will be since the weather will be still dry for the day on Sunday the twenty eighth it looks like it will see temperatures continue to stay warm in the seventies um, and eighties across the midstate but look at these temperatures across Oklahoma Texas Kansas Missouri talk about temperatures in the mid to upper eighties to around ninety that's going to feel pretty hot and humid to end uh, this month but. Of course, this is just land of voodoo, but you may never know what's going to happen, and you know things could change as we get closer. So just uh, uh, please keep that uh, on the note. <clears throat> All right, as we head into uh, the land of voodoo country, this is the real land of voodoo country. This is for uh, Monday, April the 29th. It looks like the weather for Middle Tennessee continues to stay dry, so some storms will still will still try to continue across. The Excuse me. It looks like storms will still continue across much of the state of Florida, but again, here comes this uh, other system we'll be watching carefully uh, uh, that may happen across parts of Oklahoma, Texas, Missouri, uh, Wisconsin, and Iowa. That could bring the chance for showers and thunderstorms. But for us, we should be looking pretty dry for the for the the final weekend for for this month, and even into uh, Monday the 29th. And here's here's the high temperatures we're expecting down below that we're expected to be uh, st still continue to stay warm only in the 70s to near 80 as we head into that final Monday of this month here. But again, here comes another front we'll be watching carefully if this, if this is correct here. But again, this is now getting close to be two weeks away, which it could change as we get closer. And here's the precipitate values. And again, it could be some showers and storms, uh, especially on the warm side of the system. It could be some storms across parts, we'll say, from St. Louis to uh, Chicago. But in terms of severe weather, it looks like uh, the severe threat appears to be on the marginal side, but there could be a little bit of a good chance of severe storms where you see those yellows and orange shaded colors here across parts of eastern and southeast Texas, and that's something we could watch carefully as well. But again, this is just land of voodoo, and things could change as we get closer. All right, as we skip to the uh, forecast for Thursday, May 2nd, looks like the weather should be drying out. So it looks like the next chance of rain, I know the uh, other model, the other model uh, graphics are not available at the moment here, but uh, I think both on the 30th and the uh, of April and May 1st looks to be uh, looks to be unsettled for, uh, for the most part as our next front moves in, but it looks like the same system that brings a chance for some rain both on the 30th and May 1st will push off towards the East Coast. But then yet again, another system may try to develop across the Pacific Northwest region, but look at the Plains region, looking pretty dry. Including for us here, uh, including for us here across Middle Tennessee, as we head into the day on Thursday, May second, and temperatures once again down below that looks to be except will be a little bit cooler as we start off that new month here. We're talking about temperatures in the um, upper fifties into the low sixties. Which, if you do not want, if you do not, if you do not want fifties or sixties to be in the forecast for the first of May, well, again, this is just two weeks away, and that's what we call this the pure land of voodoo. And you may never know that could always change as we get closer. But look at these temperatures across much of the Plains region, across much of the southeast. Talking about temperatures in the 70s and 80s, except there could be some low 90s here across parts of uh, eastern Colorado and west Kansas. But again, this is just land of voodoo. It's two weeks away, and things could change as we get closer, as always. All right, as we head into uh, Friday, May 3rd, the weather for Middle Tennessee looks to stay dry once again. So not expecting any showers or storms to worry about at the moment here, if this is correct. But again, here comes the, this uh, next system we could watch as well. But that's good, that's going to be far over towards the west, the far west coast. But if we look at the high temperatures for the day on the 3rd of May, and that's on a Friday, we're talking about high temperatures. Starting to warm up just a little bit back up into the upper 60s and low 70s for our viewing area. But look at these 80s. In a dark red shade of colors here, that dark red, excuse me. <laughs> Get yeah, those uh, dark red shaded colors right here across parts of uh, Kansas and Nebraska and, and across, excuse me, down around New Orleans. That could be, you could see temperatures in the upper 80s to around 90 degrees possible. So it's going to feel pretty hot uh, for these folks around parts of, of Louisiana and across parts of the uh, Texas and Oklahoma Panhandle regions and parts of West Kansas as we head into the day on uh, Friday, May 2nd. But if we look at the precipitation type values. And again, nothing, nothing going on for the most part across almost the entire U.S. here, except, we'll, except there'll be a new system that, 
God, I'm talking too fast here again. Bear with me. But it seems like uh, we're going to be watching this uh, new system that could ha- that could form across parts of the uh, West Coast region as we head into the first Friday for May. But for the most part, the weather should be looking pretty quiet as we as we kick off that new month, at least for now. All right, as we end this uh, forecast here for tonight, this is for uh, the first Saturday of May. That's May 4th. We're talking about uh, still the weather staying dry for Middle Tennessee, but again, it looks like a new system may try to develop that could bring, you know, well, that well that could, well, that could increase the, you know, the next chance for showers and thunderstorms across parts of the uh, uh, Plain States and even across parts of the Rockies region. But again, this is land of voodoo, so maybe if the weather is correct, if the models still change much here for the next couple of weeks here, it looks like maybe we'll see some dry weather to start off the month of May. So we'll see what happens. And temperatures, you know, down below that for highs looks to be a little bit, still a little bit cooler, but still warmer than ever where we should be, you know, for the middle of spring. We're talking about temperatures warming back into the um, 70s and maybe to the low 80s across parts of middle Tennessee and across much of uh, the south as well, where temperatures could be temperatures could be in the 80s as well. Even the same thing for Florida, Oklahoma and Kansas and Texas. But if we look at the precipitation type highs in the end, it could be a few storms that could try to develop across parts of the uh, Plain States region. But look at this here. Wouldn't be surprised, maybe. Wouldn't be surprised if, if, if another uh, snowstorm could develop across parts of Colorado or Wyoming as we head into the day on Saturday, the fourth of May. But again, this is two weeks away, and things could change as we get closer. So please keep that in mind. But in terms of severe weather with this uh, next system for the first Saturday for that new month, it looks like some storms could turn strong to severe uh, across parts of the Plain states. But again, this is just two weeks away. That's what we call this: the land of voodoo. And again, it's just too early to go into details. So just. Keep that in mind. <clears throat> anyway, well, that's it for this uh, forecast video update on this uh, Thursday evening. I will be back here first thing tomorrow morning, probably about 9 o'clock or so, uh, for the next uh, forecast video update. So I hope, hope you can join me live on Facebook then. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully I'll be up uh, around that time. And I'll continue, as always, my posting more notes or updates on my blog and Facebook pages uh, 24-7. But in the meantime, thank you for watching. Have a, a great evening. And please stay, south, stay safe out there. Since there'll be some, since there'll be some storms on the forecast for the rest of this evening, and of course, and, and try to stay warm out there as well, since temperatures will be cooler as well as we head into uh, tomorrow and also on Saturday before we start to warm up again uh, on Easter Sunday and also for next week. So again, I'll see you guys around nine o'clock in the morning. Y'all take care and God bless.